discuss all things COVID is Dr. Jane Morgan. She's the executive director of the Piedmont Healthcare COVID Task Force. Dr. Morgan, uh, we appreciate you getting up bright and early for us. Let's start with uh, the conversation about booster shots. Seemingly conflicting messages over the past 48 hours. Pfizer wanting to get emergency use authorization for a third shot. Uh, the nation's top health agencies saying that a booster isn't necessary right now. Help us understand this uh, apparent disparity. Yeah, good morning, Boris, and thank you for having me. I think what Pfizer is doing is Pfizer is looking out on the horizon as any good company will do and anticipating the needs. We certainly don't want to be in a situation uh, as we were in at the beginning of this pandemic. Remember when we didn't have enough PPE? And so Pfizer is looking, as many other companies are looking out and anticipating what that need will be. Certainly our vaccines are holding steady now. There doesn't seem to be a need for that booster, but a business decision is a different corporate decision. And I think they're anticipating what that need is to make certain that there is supply available in case we move in that direction. And doctor, if the time comes when public health officials say we do need to get a booster, are you anticipating that there's gonna be a similar degree of hesitation to what we're seeing now in Arkansas, for example, when a large chunk of that population remains unvaccinated? Yeah, we certainly see about 1,000 counties in the United States now with low vaccination rates. We certainly need to address the questions that people have. And, and many of these questions can be addressed in your primary care physician's offices or other physician's offices. But certainly that is a concern where we are with vaccinated people versus unvaccinated people. Currently, the unvaccinated are mostly a risk to themselves and to others who are unvaccinated. What we are concerned about with the Delta variant is whether or not the unvaccinated can migrate and begin to become a risk to the vaccinated by allowing more mutations and variants to develop that will evade the immunization status of the rest of us. Yeah, so let's pivot to this new CDC guidance. Uh, we are just weeks away from a new school year. Uh, the CDC putting out uh, updated guidance for educators and students. It prioritizes in-person learning and it includes policies to uh, incentivize getting vaccinated. Uh, I'm curious about your overall assessment of these new guidelines. What do you think? No, I think it's great, and I think we uh, very much understand the mental health of not only our children, but society uh, at large has suffered during this uh, extended pandemic. One thing that we have to think about is that those children with the mask mandate for uh, schools that are older than 12, how are we going to implement that? What, how will we determine who's been vaccinated or not? Will they need to present vaccination cards? For those children who are less than 12, masking will be easy to identify because none of those children will have been vaccinated. But when you get into the age group that's older than 12, that's going to be a little bit murkier. And how will you determine who needs to have on a mask and who doesn't, and how will that be enforced? And so that still needs to be worked out. Yeah, I imagine there, there likely will be some uh, disparities like we're seeing with vaccination rates, with some areas that are policing it effectively and some areas that are more lax and likely have higher case rates. Uh, Dr. Jane Morgan, uh, we have to leave the conversation there. As always, appreciate your insight. Thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. Uh, coming up six months after the deadly insurrection on the Capitol, the fencing 